Hey, what's good, ladies and gentlemen? In this Dragon's Dogma 2 video, we're gonna take a look at the Archer class. And for those of you that already tried it out and maybe it felt a bit clunky, well, we're here to make sure in this video you get the most powerful and smooth experience with your Archer playstyle. Let's get into it. Now, if you picked up this class a bit early in your playthrough, whether you were missing some certain augments and abilities, or just trying to learn about the game overall, this may contribute to why it felt a little underwhelming. But I can assure you, it gets better, boys. The Archer class has insane burst damage, it's great at burning down bosses, can apply status effects real quick, there's just so much control and flexibility this class brings to every fight. So real quick, let's just go ahead and cover the basics. The Archer's best base ability is going to be its steady shot. This is essentially just the game's manual aim mechanic, but this gives us a very unique advantage from other classes, since we can directly aim at enemy weak spots. Not only that, but this one base ability gives us the option to either fire quickly with lower DPS or to hold it down for a stronger shot. Lastly, this will also allow us to activate all of our weapon skills without having to hold down L1. So this one base ability is what branches off into everything else, making your powerful and smooth archer playstyle. Now you're still able to use your auto track that your character has by default without always resorting to R1 steady shot. But if you choose to use this, I would look at it as more of a passive DPS output from your character. The only time I really found myself using this was when I'm either looking around the landscape, watching for other enemies, trying to reposition. It's just a perfect way to keep our DPS output up while our focus is really on something else. But for burn phases or any important moments in a fight, I would highly encourage you to start using that steady shot as your bread and butter. And do me a big favor, if you're enjoying this video, consider hitting that like button, subscribe, or ring the notification bell for more of this coming your way. It helps me out very much. Thank you so much, guys. Now that we got the basics out of the way, let's talk about our dodge. So we have a few extremely smooth ways of getting out of danger. Now, if I were you, I'd go through them all and find what fits your style of play the best. Of course, you could use them all when you get out there on the landscape. I just personally tend to focus on one specifically at a time. Maybe my brain's just too small. But anyways, I focus mainly on that slide ability. This is done while running and hitting the loose button, which is square on controller. This is gonna have us perform a slide dodge that I find very helpful, especially against bigger boss enemies. You can pretty much slide right underneath their legs and end up behind them to follow up immediately with the shot right to their back. As I gained more experience with this, I was able to stop running away as much as an archer and start running towards any monster deciding to charge me. So if you can get whatever dodge ability you pick down packed, it's going to make your archer playstyle a super smooth experience. Don't be sleeping on all these dodge abilities that this class has to offer. So let's go over some of the best abilities for you to use depending on your playstyle. So first and foremost, we have to give the honorable mention to what's available early on. And for me, it was Barrage Shot or the Upgrade Manifold Shot. This ability is definitely going to be able to hold you down early on as it shoots three arrows in a quick succession. It does have some decent damage, especially if you end up manually aiming this at enemies' weak spots. The downside is that it does consume a boatload of stamina for what it actually does. Also, your arrows end up falling off a bit earlier than I think we'd all like, so it keeps you in this mid-ranged bow battle. So there's definitely a bit of a give and take on this ability, but as I said, it's going to do you justice early on in the game. Now let's take a look at our first true powerhouse ability, the Tempest Shot. The Tempest Shot is going to allow us to continuously shoot arrows until our stamina bar has completely depleted. And this is going to be shooting those arrows at a much faster rate than the previous ability as well. This is going to be your biggest damage burner, especially whenever a boss is taken down. You can aim this right up at a weak spot and go to town. Now the downside of this ability is during the entire phase of shooting these arrows, movement is not an option. So if there's any AoE going out, any incoming enemies, this ability is going to need to be interrupted for you to reposition yourself. Another staple to the Archer class is Dire or Deathly Arrow. This is what you're going to charge up to send smaller enemies flying and to put any off-balance bosses right on their ass. Now this goes a bit further gameplay-wise as there's a window of perfect timing. So it does take a bit to master, but it's going to give you a heavy increase in damage and knockdown potential. Another really great ability you need 
to consider and was my personal favorite was the spiral arrow. You will shoot one singular arrow, but when it connects, it's going to continuously do a swirl, damaging all enemies around that area over time. Do yourself a favor and don't overlook this one. Not only does it do a very respectable amount of damage, but it's also going to apply status effects extremely quickly. I find this ability also works in our favor in a few different scenarios. First off, obviously, if you aim this at an enemy's weak spot and stack like three or four of these suckers one after another, you're going to start doing some massive damage. And if you're enchanted with a status effect while doing this well, you already know. But that's not all, folks. If you come across smaller targets, this ability is also going to allow us to keep enemies at a distance, especially in choke points. This is an AoE ability, and it's able to hold crowds of enemies in place if they try to rush you. So this ability just covers so many niches all in one that I just, I consider it one of the best of the best. And I can't stress it enough just to go back to the status effects one more time. This will apply anything super quickly. So if you know an enemy is vulnerable to, let's say, fire, you shoot three of these arrows and that boy is going up in flames. And I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like the frost buildup was just easiest to apply. No, I have no official testing on this, but it just felt that way. Now that we spoke about some of the damage over time abilities, let's talk about the burst damage with exploding shot, which uses the explosive arrows. Now, the downside to this is you do need to craft or buy these, but I think that's a well-deserved trade-off considering the amount of damage you're going to be able to deal with just this one shot. So just to be clear, you need to shoot the fire arrow, then shoot the same spot to detonate that fire arrow. You're not only going to get a fat burst of damage, but this gives us a high chance to stun that target as well. Of course, like always, aim this at the weak spot of an enemy, like the head for the biggest bang for your buck. And on top of all of that, it always has the chance of setting the target on fire. Now team, those are the main abilities I would swap around to have the most powerful archer playstyle. I wanted to mention the cascade shot. It's like a shotgun shooting three arrows at the same time horizontally, but the damage wasn't great and I felt like the other abilities we covered here in this video just does an overall better job. Now let's jump in and talk about some of these augments that you need to be on the lookout for, for not only this class, but it's going to transfer over to other classes as well. First off will be Endurance, increasing our maximum stamina, which is not only a great one to have for the Archer, but you will certainly feel the difference when using this augment when you swap over to even the Thief. Next one to be on the lookout for is Abuscade. Again, this is going to benefit the Thief class greatly. This gives us an increased damage to targets that are not in battle stance, meaning this will work on enemies that are not yet in combat. And if you have a Thief, or if anyone on your team, any of your pawns, have smoke bombs, this will consider all enemies within that smoke bomb out of combat. So a very nice synergistic augment to go along with other pawns if you have that ability. Radiance is also very nice, causing your lantern to consume less oil. Isn't that nice? Lethality is also very good, increasing the damage dealt when striking a target's vitals. So any weak spot you can hit will be rewarded even further for you. So again, for the Thief, the Mystic Spearhand, the Archer is all going to find huge benefit in just this one augment. And finally, Avidity is another nice passive to have in our pocket, allowing us to climb cliffs, scale enemies, and other surfaces much quicker. So these are some of the augments you gotta keep on your radar to not only increase the damage and fluidity of your class, but it's gonna carry over and make your other classes, when you decide to use them, feel more lethal as well. But I wanna know what you guys think. Is there an amazing ability that I missed? What's your favorite ability and what do you use most often? Did this video help you at all? Let me know in the comments below. Hit that like button if you liked the video, subscribe and ring the notification bell for more, and I will see you in the next one. Toodles!